Mercy Oil. The Deputy Senior President, His Excellency, Senator Barao Jibrin, CFR, the other officers of the Senate, the distinguished senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Let me recognize in specific my senators. Senator Simon Bakola Long, representing the Plateau South. My own senator from the Central Zone, Senator Diket Lang, who happens not just, just my senator alone, was with my was my head boy in secondary school. And then the senator representing the Northern Zone, Senator si Simon Mwatkong. Thank you, distinguished senators, for giving the, uh, for this opportunity for me to interact with you and give you a brief about myself. I'm a son of a clergy. I was born to late Reverend Toma Iliwada in a community, a little village called Dungung, in Kanke local government of Plateau State. Because of my father's profession, we travel across many states. We live in Bauchi State. I, I spent some time in Yobe and Borno State with my father. So I did my primary school across different states, but tidy up the school in Plateau City in primary six, secondary school in Boy School to Gendry, my university in Makodi, first degree. The university retained me as a lecturer in the university after graduation because I was about the best students, so I was retained by the university as a lecturer. My master's at ATB Bochi, my PhD at Suka. University of Nigeria and Suka. The university retained me as a lecturer at the, in my 20s, but I had the opportunity of becoming a director in my early 30s in the university. And the minority leader, distinguished senator Abba Maru, I worked under him when he was chairman of the university uh, governing council when I was appointed a director in the, you know, in the university. I was director of ICT of the university. I automated investing in several platforms. I work with the NUC on several programs, and my CV will tell you how much I've worked with international partners, development partners, and it gave me the opportunity also of working across the country. Working with Guinness Health gave me the opportunity of working with all the field, a field office in the South, South, and Southeast. I've worked, I've gone to all the, all the local governments within those communities. I interacted with several other international bodies. But let me summarize it this way. The opportunity of working across different states gave me the responsibility of acknowledging the diversity of Nigeria and the need for inclusivity in the country. I work as a, you know, in, in, in Yobe, where I spent most of my years. I was minority by tribe, minority by religion, but inclusive by the community I live in. My father being a pastor, was having the best friend of his as the chief imam of the community. And he calls my father the man in Krista, in, in Hausa. Simply means the leader of the Christian community. So that was the kind of community I live in and I grew in. So I've lived knowing that Nigeria needs diversity. It lives in a more diverse, in diverse community. In Benue, where I also work as a lecturer, I was minority by tribe. But at the youngest age of 32, 33, which is the youngest ever in the history of the university, I was made a director. Which means... No, there was always technology. It is even better now and easier. You know, you go to an office before the officer leaves this office. An exhibit until Mr. President appointed in 2017 as an INA commissioner. As an INA commissioner, I served in Benue State. An opportunity of conducting election in several uh, states, especially when there are difficult election opportunities, I was sent to remedy in many, in many states. I was involved in election in states like Oshu, like Ondo, like Edo in 2020, and several other elections that I was involved in. I resigned from IDEC and went into active politics in 2021. And I contested for the governor of Plateau State in 2023 election. And here am I before the Senate and before Nigeria to serve a different platform. Thank you, Mr. President, sir. 
before I entertain interaction and questions from distinguished senators, I'd like to acknowledge with pride the presence of our colleagues from the House of Representatives who are accompanying some of the nominees to the chambers. And in, please just rise and take a bow. I saw you. So I believe that you must now come with others. Yes, welcome. Welcome to the chambers. Yes. We are the ones that normally visit you in chambers. So now we... <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. Uh, it is my privilege and honor to take the first shot at our nominee from Plateau State. Mr. President, if you look at the resume and the pronouncement of the gentleman that is standing before you, I've known him and come across him in very many ways, both in academic and in politics. But I do know that uh, in Benue State, where he served, the first set of persons that were elected in the new dispensation was local government chairman, and I was one of them. And I can attest to the credibility, the transparency with which he carried out that assignment. And so I can attest to the fact that in Benue State, where he served as a central commissioner, we held him in very high esteem because he was very, very independent. Again, Mr. President, when I was appointed the chairman of the governing uh, council of the University of Agriculture, Makode, and the chairman, uh, pro chancellor, I came across this young man again. And again, outstandingly, like he said, at a very small age, he became the director and developed one of the digital solutions that we had in the university at that time. And because of my nature, I had some issues with very conservative elements in the university. But he proved to be one of the very pragmatic and very progressive elements in that university. And so I'm actually not surprised that he has been appointed today to become a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank and I you. urge my colleagues, based on his antecedents, to spare him the time so that he can go and settle down and hit the ground running. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, so, in other words, you have no question for him. Hey, Senator Lalong. Senator Lalong. Yes. Abba Muru has no question. Do you have any question for him? My only, Mr. President, my name is Simon Lalong, representing the good people of Plateau South. Mr. President, honestly, I felt very honored and indebted to this Senate especially to Mr. President, and also the comment by my leader from the and became the candidate. He would have been the governor of Plateau State by now. But today, before the Senate, I recall that Mr. President did a lot of effort when I left to the Senate and the vacuum and you also have in persuading Mr. President to get a nomination for Plateau State. Okay. And this nomination, again, is no other person than the candidate that is here with his resume that is displayed. My own is on behalf of the good people of Plateau State. I don't want to stop because Dickett will want to speak. And uh, Dashu, what is Dashu? Dashu also wants to make a comment that the three of us have unanimously agreed that this is the best time, the best candidate for this best period, to be the minister, to represent the good people of Plateau State. So we thank Mr. President and all the distinguished senators that will give him accelerated uh, approval to immediately move in to help Mr. President in that very, I will say, uh, good, uh, and also ministry. The one humanitarian requires a lot of intelligence, requires a lot of industry. So I thank you, Mr. President, for this great opportunity and then the solidarity. Uh, 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 
okay. You can sit down. So, in other words, you have no question for the nominee. Uh, but all you... No, let, let the people who know him from Plateau say something first, so that we can now proceed to, to ask him questions. Uh, Distinguished Senator Dikepla. The President of the Senate and the Chairman of the National Assembly, distinguished colleagues, once more, I am Senator Dickett Lang, Senator representing Plateau Central. I rise again to support what my leader, Senator Lalong, and the minority leader from Benue Plateau has spoken. But I rise because the candidate is from my constituency. I would add voice to what Senator Lalong has said in thanking Mr. President for the choice of Dr. Nentawe as minister representing the good people of Plateau State, and then desiring to send him to the committee, the Senate, the Ministry of Humanitarian Service and Poverty Alleviation. I see it as a round peg in a round hole. I know Nentawe, when we were young, went to the same secondary school with. And Nentawe does not change. He remains the original Nentawe we knew when we were small, despite all achievements he has made in life. He has been for the masses. In fact, in his work, we lean on him to get to the grassroots. And if today the president decides that he is sending to the Minister of Humanitarian Service, I feel it's a round peg in a round hole because that is a ministry that needs someone who is compassionate. Nentawe is compassionate. It's a ministry too that en engulfs the entire country and it needs a man with vision. Nentawe is visionary. It is a ministry that needs data analysis. Nentawe is data, and data is Nentawe. It's a ministry that needs someone who is healthy and strong. This man is healthy and strong. I thank Mr. President, and I thank my colleagues, because I know that by the time he is confirmed, I am sure that our senators representing Nigeria, the 109 constituency, will be pleased with this appointment. I thank you all, and I know that after this, we will give him an accelerated confirmation, and I am sure we will see results. Thank you, Mr. President, and my colleagues. This is Senator Pam. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for giving me this opportunity to speak very sensitive issue, particularly on a nominee that comes from my state. Uh, I am Senator Pamad Konda Chungyang, representing the glorious people of Plateau North. Though the nominee mistakenly make a wrong pronunciation of my name, I will forgive him because he has come here with a very good anxiety. My name is not Simon Matkon. But my name is Pamat Kondachungyang. Sir, this young man, as I know him, to possess a very rich credentials. From a younger age, as the CV portrays, is a professor of digital systems and an engineer by excellence. If you go through deeply, sir, distinguished colleagues, and look at his CV. His personal data is rich. And in page two, you look at his uh, consultancy services that cost across all sectors of life. In page five, his working experiences showcases that he started from the university and worked as an INEC commissioner. In page eight, his educational qualifications shows that he's a trained and a membership of various disciplines. And in page nine, 
he has 24 publications in Kitty. In page 12, his referees shows that he's a man of the people. Mr. President, we are very grateful to the President of the Federation. You have given Plateau State somebody that will work for the nation. And I'm happy because all of us here, having he spoken, we know that somebody has said something, and the position or the portfolio that has been assigned to is it's a place that requires serious people with serious minds, and he's qualified for this. And I'm asking the colleagues, my colleagues here, to give him an accelerated uh, confirmation so that he can kick the ball rolling while he's been firmly confirmed. Thank you very much. Okay, now. We are, we are through with the, the honors of the minister. We are now going to the fireworks. Is there anybody that has a question for the, uh, for the nominee? Yes. Uh -huh. That's where it should be. Let's start from the majority party. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, let's start from the right hand side. I'm oh, sorry, let's start from. The... <laughs> let, let, let's, let's start. Uh, I, I'll give a, an opportunity to all my bosses. Uh, let's start from my first boss. Uh, uh, it's Sadiq. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Like. As chair, my distinguished colleagues, I am Sadiq Suleiman Umar. I represent Kwara North. Uh, uh, Professor Natawe, well, your CV spoke clearly and you also represent yourself. And we heard from your head boy, you've been very consistent since you are young. And luckily, I think I've met you too, and I think you are a gentleman, smart, and humble. However, you are going to the humanitarian ministry. As of today, the data is that 40% of Nigerians are living below poverty. And it's also worse than that. When you look at multi-dimensional poverty index, about 63% are also below that index. Thank God you are an engineer, ICT savvy, but you are aware that for years, subsequent governments have spent billions of naira to alleviate poverty, yes. billions and billions. Yes. The challenge has always been, how will this money get to those intended without getting it lost? Will you tell us how you are going to use your experience to make sure that federal government money that will be under your care in the ministry will get to the people that need it? Thank you. Okay. So just write down. The question, the, this other one is that it just asks you how the federal government money will reach the, the most vulnerable and the poorest of the poor in our society. Uh, the civil senator, Sheo Boba. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President, for recognizing me. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, my name is Senator Sheo Boba Umar, representing Bauchi South. Mr. President, uh, I rise to add my own voice on the nominee, Professor Nentawe. I congratulate you as a nominee of Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Mine is not a question per se. I want to make my own contribution, Mr. President, because the nominee, he is coming from Plateau State. Function local government to be specific, and we are sharing borders. We are neighbors. My own constituent, Bauchi South, and we have a lot in common. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I know the nominee for over 25 years. He was born and brought. He was born in Plateau State, but I can tell you, he was brought up in Bauchi State. I know him as a destabilized Nigerian, down to earth, and a very respected personality. I believe, Mr. President, have gotten the right, the right choice for this position. I am standing to support the confirmation of the nominee. I therefore aligned my own position with the position of the distinguished three senators from Plateau State, Senator Lalong, 
Dickett Flank, and my brother, Senator Markov, for calling on my distinguished colleagues to fasten the confirmation of this gentleman. I therefore uh, call on the, my colleagues to support the nominee of Mr. Nentawe. Thank you very much, sir. Thank what you. the distinguished senator, Sheikh Boba Omar, I actually wanted us to go into questions. So if anybody has no question, then we don't need to speak. Uh, I mean, the civil senator Dume, you may wish to ask your question. Bend the microphone, please. Uh, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, and uh, the nominee, uh, I would like to start by congratulating you. You are the, I think, the third minister to be nominated. The first one was a lady. The second one also was a lady. And as far as it is now, your ministry is the most important because 70% or 60% of Nigerians are living below poverty level. And the federal government deliberately have been making effort, allocating huge sums of money to address the humanitarian crisis. And you are also coming at a time when uh, the whole world organizations that are in charge of humanitarian <coughs> issues are concerned about the escalating, uh, escalating humanitarian crisis in the country. And this is not because the government is not doing anything, but because it is not getting down to those that are affected. You know the circumstances that lead to the relief of your predecessor. My question now is as the first man to be appointed to that ministry, what will you do as a case of emergency to make sure that the humanitarian crisis we are seeing, we are facing, and we are likely to face more should be done. Unfortunately, you are ICT persons. Today's world, if we are serious, or let me say you are serious, we can start seeing the impact when you settle down. So how do you intend to do that? That will give us a lot of comfort if we get a good answer from you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the nominee, you may attempt to answer before we go to this side. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me start with a question from uh, Senator Sadiq Suleiman from Quara. He asks, how will this money be voted by the Senate, the National Assembly, generally? We get to the vulnerable group across the country. Let me start this way. After my appointment, I received call from several people, and everybody that called me keep on showing the concern that with this level of poverty, and also with a new framework in the economic conditions of the country, the reforms that we're having, they keep on asking me, can you resolve the issue of poverty across the country? And I said, the issue of poverty, poverty in the reduction is a wholesome uh, challenge that involves almost everybody, from National Assembly to several agencies, government uh, you know, the agencies, private sector, development partners, and other people that will be involved. But this is what I will do that maybe we can add a little bit of uh, impetus to the, the fight. I know that already there are steps that have been taken by government, and there are also steps that are taken by the ministry. 
in streamlining and ensuring they have a register of our poor people. That's the data. And once you want to address any issue uh, in the 21st century, the first thing you do is you get data. Because data is a king in resolving challenges in the 21st century. And this is what we may do as a country or as a ministry if given the opportunity. First is to work with agencies that we need the, the data from them. And the first thing we need to do is, if given the opportunity, because we, while in INEC, we work with the National Population Commission in getting the geospatial uh, data of Nigeria. And if you look at the, the NPC delimitation, it did, you know, it delineated Nigeria into the six, geogra six uh, geographical zones, the 37, 36 states plus Abu Jamaica, 37. The several are the four local government, then the wards, and in the wards, it goes further and delineate you know, the wards into what they call enumeration areas. And the enumeration areas become the smallest unit that they use in a distribution, you know, in, a, in, you know, in dispersing uh, uh, facilities. And that was what INEC has been using in aggregating that, that, that data to form what they call uh, pooling units, pooling units to ward, ward to local government, local government to state, and then to the country. And the same thing that we must do in poverty alleviation, because you must get the map of the country from National Population Commission, get enriching areas across all wards, and then you get the geospatial data of poor people distributed across the country. Now, if, and that will also involve going back to the data of the country. And if you look at the data that we, we, we know that we have, we say 65% of poor people live in the north, and then 35% live in the south. That's 86, 86 million people in, you know, in the north are poor, while for some poor people in, for some people in the south are poor. But we must go further than that. Distribute these people by state. Distribute these people by local government. Distribute these people by immigration areas. And once you can do by what? By what then immigration areas? And by immigration areas, then you know how many people are in that, you know, in that community, how, you know, the, the, how many people are poor. And then when they're sharing materials, you cannot distribute the materials not going to a state. You can't say you're sending 10,000 bags of rice to Plateau. No. You're sending 10,000 bags of rice to Plateau. So, so number will go to the central zone. So, so number will go to a local government. So, so number will go to a ward. So, so number will go to an innovation area based on the level of poverty. Now, because most of the time when you look at the statistics, because there's no just partial distribution of the, the, of the poor people, you can't even determine how people are actually captured in your own uh, senatorial zone, or in your own ward, or in your own community. But by just doing this alone, we cannot distribute materials to the last mile in the country. And that will help in getting data. We can just get a dashboard. The dashboard will be similar to the Senate, to the House of Rape, to the, to, 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 I mean, to, our, to, to the people providing the funding, that, you know, the internal partners, to the whole country. And the visibility will bring transparency, will bring also the distribution of material across the people down to the last mile. I think that would be the easiest way that we can, you know, we can ensure that everybody in the country that needs to get a relief material, we get it. And that will also help the senators, the uh, House of Rep, for the oversight function, make it very easy for them because it's a dashboard for them to check, and they can make confirmation in the communities, the community, I mean, and, you know, in the rural community, and that will help us as a country to fast track the process of ensuring that we get materials to the people as fast as possible. That's the first by ensuring that we have we deepen technology in the you know, deep technology in distribution of reading materials to the poorest of the poor. Senator Nengi. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. My name is Senator Abdul Ninji, and I represent Bauchi Central of Bauchi State. Mr. Chairman, let me join you in welcoming my younger brother, Prop, and members of the House and his delegation to the chamber, to the Senate Chamber of the National Assembly. Uh, without any doubt, he has said it himself. His father is a well-known name across Bauchi State and Plateau State. 
the issue, one of the global trending issues yes. at this moment yes. is the issue of artificial intelligence. And yes. looking at your background, yes. Prof, what's your take about artificial intelligence? And how does paying attention to the issue of artificial intelligence benefits Nigeria? That is my question. The uh, uh, colleagues, the, uh, we, we, the most important thing is for us to determine the suitability of this candidate to be a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And even from all the comments, and uh, uh, if he's here to lecture us, we may not finish today. Uh, is it the view of the Senate that he be allowed to take a power go? Those who support say aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. Uh, Prof. No, no clapping in the Senate, please. No clapping. Can clap, but no clap. No clapping. That is um Nentawe Goshui Roda, the Minister Designate for Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, just done with the screening by the Senate and he's been asked to take a bow and go. So the Senate President is going to call in the next to call for the next ministerial nominee. And uh, the next person we have on the list is Muhammad Megari Dingyadi. Call the next nominee. Ministerial, one of the ministerial nominees, Nentawe Yiroda, who has just been screened by the Senate. So, um, sir, you've been asked to take a bow and go after taking okay. some few questions. How do you feel? Um, I feel very positive uh, about the country. I'm a believer in this country, in the future of the name of the country. And we we'll work together with Mr. President to ensure that uh, we elevate and reduce as much as we can the poverty level in the country. We we'll look at the policy framework. I work with all the agencies, the international partners, and every, all stakeholders to ensure that we reduce and extend as much as we can the poverty level in the, in the country. So we say congratulations to you, sir. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we get back into the chamber because the next ministerial nominee is already inside. That is Mohammed Megari Dingadi, and he's going to take his questions. 